the Cummins have been uh, ahead of the game. The Duramax is, um, there's not as many guys out there doing the sled pulling or in competition. This thing is coming and it's gonna, it's gonna kill the Cummins. It's just a matter of time. So again, welcome back to another awesome episode on the channel. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Today we're going to go ahead and talk about the 3200 horsepower Duramax that I ran into in Milwaukee when we had the shorty there. By the way, we got first place on that build, which is pretty cool. But we did run into the 3200 horsepower Duramax build. As a matter of fact, I was able to actually talk to the guy that engineered the entire driveline on this thing. I got him on camera and we're going to get a good up close and personal look on this build. Now for some of you guys to get your feelings hurt really easily, just don't watch the video. I, I don't know what to tell you. Since this isn't a Cummins build, some of you guys may actually get a little upset and may cry. Please, no! 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 But it's okay. It'll be all right. That's your warning. If you're sensitive, just don't watch the video. Go on to the next one. Of course, there's no doubt in my mind that the Cummins can handle way more horsepower than the Duramax. As a matter of fact, Cummins has been leading the way for many years. They've been around for a lot longer as well, and they really have it together. Now, before I explain anything on this truck, I want to let you guys know that I am not biased to just Duramax. I know that I am a Duramax guy, but I'm also a Cummins owner as well. My very first truck that I ever built from the ground up was a 24 valve Cummins, and I love that thing. It's got two turbos. It's got a built trans this truck is an absolute powerhouse i built it on the channel if you guys want to go back and watch some older videos but i really love it and this is why i fell in love with the dodge cummins but let's just call it how it is if you guys were to talk about light duty pickup trucks with these engines in them whether it be duramax or cummins let's just say that you remove the pistons out of a cummins and then you remove the pistons out of a duramax just see the difference it's insane the cummins diesel engine is definitely leading the way when it comes to horsepower torque as well as strength rigidity and longevity there was a cummins engine that hit the highest horsepower the qsk 95 engine sort of out of the range of its class because this is a v16 but it did produce numbers of up to 4400 horsepower on the dyno so we're going to talk about what sort of makes up that 3500 horsepower of course we don't want to go into all the specs because this video can be a mile long and i don't have the owner of the truck but i was able to snag the guy that built the drive line and i'm going to go ahead and interview him in this video he's going to explain everything uh, from his perspective of the build and how they were able to put the power to the ground. The truck that I'm going to showcase in this video today is the Cummins Killer 3 and yes this is the third version. They've been through so much testing on this thing over the years and they finally were able to come up with this really sweet looking truck. This version is a 2020 GMC 2500 HD Denali look. It looks sweet. This is definitely one of my favorite looks. The owner driver is Chris Kuslick and Craig Dickey. The performance gains on this build was 3200 horsepower and 35 100 plus foot pounds of torque. The chassis was built by Performance Pros and the engine is a Waggler DX460 billet aluminum Duramax. What makes this Duramax special is the fact that it's complemented by those three huge triples by the way triple turbos and they are i believe t6 if i'm not mistaken but i'm not exactly sure what size turbos they are i don't think that the builder wanted to release that which i totally understand but with all that out of the way let's go ahead and head over there let's talk to randy about this 3200 horsepower duramax what makes this thing special and of course what's up and coming for this build because i'm really interested i'm gonna keep a close eye on this one so let's head over there right now and we have a treat for you guys. We have the highest horsepower Duramax in history. And we're talking, if I'm not mistaken, 300 or 3, 3,200 horsepower. Is that correct? Yeah, and about 4,000 foot pounds of torque. 4,000 foot pounds of torque. And they dubbed this truck as the Cummins Killer. So we're going to talk to the lead, I would say, tech or the engineer that I guess fabbed this truck up to get where it needs to be, right? My company, Proformance Pros, out of Kearney, Michigan, we build the tube chassis, the differentials and everything. We do not build the motors. The motor is a Waggler competition uh, DX motor, but uh, we are the only company in the country that builds an uh, independent front differential truck, and we use 11 and a half differential to take all this horsepower and torque and be able to hold up to it. We built a locker for it that has an inch and three quarter axle shaft. What's amazing is this motor puts out about 4,000 foot pounds of torque. When you put that through the differential, we're putting about 44,000 foot pounds of torque to the wheels. And when we're sled pulling and when you get on the far end of the track and the, the pan drops, the grousers are in the ground, that thing's hunkering down, you got about 44,000 foot pounds of torque to the back wheels. It's unbelievable that we can even get stuff to hold up. Well, right now the, the, the Cummins have been uh, ahead of the game. 
the Duramax is, um, there's not as many guys out there doing the sled pulling or in competition. So the Kuzlik family and the Cummins killer has invested a lot of money. He said I'd quit pulling if I had to put a Cummins in here. Wow. So he, he keeps on, you know, this whole engine design he got with Jeremy Wagler, Wagler competition, and showed, told him what he wanted and how this motor was to be built. This thing is coming, and it's gonna, it's gonna kill the Cummins. It's just a matter of time. And uh, so all you Duramax guys, just uh, cheer on the Cummins killer because we're going to get her done. I love it, man. And really quickly, if you could just brush on the size of the turbos, if you if you know that by memory. If not, it's fine. I know there's a lot of specs going on. I know you talked about it having a billet bottom end, um, and then I can only imagine the type of feeling you have going on, but if there's anything you could brush up on as far as performance. Um, I don't build the engines. I, I got my hands full of just trying to saddle up all the horsepower to this chassis. I'd imagine everything's built inside the engine, though. I, I don't oh, yeah, it's all built. Um, one of the things that we've had with this engine, we, we found that the common rail couldn't pulsate fast enough to feed it enough fuel at this high a horsepower. So we had this thing up to about 4,000 horsepower, and we could hardly get a pass without disintegrating the connecting rods. Wow. So Bill Miller Engineering had rods in here, and he couldn't believe it. The, the, the part of the connecting rod on the wrist pin was swinging free, the part of the crank was swinging free, but there was nothing in between. It was like a thousand toothpicks laying in the oil pan. And he says, I've never seen anything like that in my whole life. So I, that's, that's been a challenge. So let me tell you, with Wagler competition and what they're doing to build this motor, and make it stronger, the, the Duramax is coming and it's gonna be a, quite a show to be seen. Look at these drive shafts, guys. This is insane. Like, it's all drive shaft, man. That's crazy. Now now, now you're talking my language. So I don't build motors, I know a lot about- You're talking your language too there, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking drive line now. But, but um, I think that's what it comes to when you put the power to the ground, well, right? Absolutely. When you got 44,000 foot-pounds of torque and you're trying to put it to the ground, and get it to hold up, because if you're breaking, you might as well go home and you're gonna be out of business. So we built the front end using an 11 and a half American axle that comes out of the 2000 and newer GM three quarter ton and one ton trucks. So we took that rear differential, remodified it. We built a locker system for it that'll accept the inch and three quarter axle. We built axle shafts and flanges, like a, a factory GM, has six bolts that holds the CV. We put 12 you bolts put 12. on You put 12, I was looking in there, I saw that. You know, the common sense is like, we, we gotta make this stronger. Right. So the back dry shafts, I'm very blessed that one of my uh, best friends is a senior driveline engineer, Dana Spicer, and I got talking to him and he says, Randy, you know, a 1480 driveline is rated for 3,400 foot-pounds of torque. And a lot of guys are going to like the next size up with a 1550. He said the 1550 is only rated for 3,900 foot-pounds of torque. He says, if we can get you into a SPL 100, that thing has the same width on the U-joint, but the U-joint on a 1480 and a 1550 is an inch and three eighths. This SPL 100 is inch and five eighths. It's a half inch bigger in diameter. The trunnions on those U-joints are so much stronger and the amount of torque that they can take. That drive shaft is rated with the slide in it, it's rated at 5,400 foot pounds of torque. <laughs> so now we've stepped it up our game a little bit more. We got the gearbox company, SCS, to build the lower output shaft three quarters of an inch longer, or inch and three quarters longer, so that we can eliminate the slide in the dry shaft and we slide the yoke up on the shaft and slide it back and put it connected to the rear end. So now that torque rating went from 5,400 all the way up to 7,200 foot-pounds of torque. Just from those modifications. Yeah. Insane. That is crazy. So one of the things we're, we're going to work on, um, the gearbox manufacturer has an output shaft of an inch and three-quarter ten spline. It's been an inch and three-quarter ten spline for 40 years. Um, I'm gonna work with those guys if they can give us a bigger output shaft because I'm we've we've beefed up everything else. That's gonna be one of our weak links, I think, in the future. 
and we just got to make it stronger. Uh, if anything were to go to a fine spine, you know, go to a inch and three quarter, 34 spine instead of a 10 spine, because then the minor diameter is going to be stronger, bigger. I really appreciate you explaining all that to me. I know it's a mouthful, and I know there's a lot more we could talk about, guys, but you guys get the general idea on this Cummins killer. And I want you guys to follow these guys. As a matter of fact, where can we find you? You guys are sure all over Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Yeah, right? we have a website, Facebook page, uh, ProformersPros.com, uh, Facebook Pro, Proformers Pros LLC. Um, you know, and if you're out and about and you wanted to go to a great venue like here in Wisconsin, the second biggest pole in the world is right here in Toma. It's uh, the third weekend in June. I think it's June 22nd, 24th this year. It's the Wisconsin Dairyland Super National. You're not going to see a better show. This truck will be there pulling. Oh, boy. Oh, guys, you got to be there for that one. Well, I'm, I'm glad we can share this with all the Dur Duramax lovers. And, you know, it, it, good things are coming, guys. Awesome, man. This is great. Watch out, Cummins, guys. Watch out. We're ready for you. Check it out. Woo! That beautiful thing, man. Look at that. The Cummins killer. Let's see what happens. What do you think, Mark? Lots of boost. Lots, lots of and lots of boost. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's the reason there's no passenger seat. It's sucking right out of the floorboard <laughs> that isn't there, you know? Make them bald, spin them out the stack. Oh, man. So, now that we're back, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Pretty up and coming build. I know it's just a chassis, I know it's just a body. It's not an actual everyday truck, but I mean, if we're talking, we're trying to hit highest horsepower numbers, even the Cummins guys are just doing tube chassis, just a fiberglass body. You see where I'm getting at. I'm curious to see if this team can actually hit 4,000 horsepower, but I really want to see some true, legit numbers on the dyno. So they're not too far from me, so if I actually have to, I will definitely do another video on the Cummins killer. Now, I'm gonna be staying busy, guys. Stay tuned for the next video. I don't want to show you guys the rest of that. I'm really plugging away at this engine. I know it's still a chassis, but bear with me, guys. And of course, I'm gonna be throwing on the second RDS turbo. This is an S480, and uh, whew, this is gonna be a big girl, man. I'm excited about this. The goal is to get this truck done before June because I'm gonna be hosting a truck show in Van Wert, Ohio. I'm hoping to bring the Wife Max and the Cummins down there to show it off and then talk to you guys. That's it for this video today. I had a ton of fun making this one and sharing the information with you guys. Definitely let me know in the comments what you think. I wanna hear the input, good, bad, or indifferent. The haters, let me know. And then before you're out the door, definitely hit the subscribe button if you guys enjoyed the content. Hit the like button. And if you guys wanna pick up a hat like this right here, a key tag, t-shirt, merch, anything like that that I have on the website. Go ahead and check that out. Link in the description. But that's it. We'll see you on the next one. Stay tuned.